<laughs> Don't fall out of there. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Um, welcome to those of you who join us in the church building. Welcome to those of you who join us by via Zoom. Um, I've had a scroll through um, and I've done a little spin with the camera for those who are in Zoom. We're, we're slowly creeping up in the numbers physically present in the building, which is wonderful, but equally wonderful. It is to greet each one of you by the wonders of technology. I guess I better check that you can even hear me. Uh, can you give me a thumbs up if excellent? Okay, that's good. So whether you're in the church building or whether you're online, everyone's waving to Cynthia because Cynthia's coming. <laughs> but she's, she's hiding right at the back. Let's see if I can pick on it. She's right in the back corner there. There you go. So whether you're in the church building or whether you're joining us via Zoom, hopefully you have an order of service and that's going to help us to hold together as we worship together. And at different points, there'll be the opportunity for us to share across the divide of time and space via the wonders of technology. Let's start by acknowledging the gift that it is to gather together as God's people in this place and as the community of God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God is good all the time. Oh, is good. Is good. That is his nature. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's the best wow we've had so far in church. So we'll be too. And I hope you are wowing at home. Our opening prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of worship together today. And as we enjoy this fruit, Please help us to remember others who worship this day in fear or in prison. Lord Jesus, though we are scattered, worshipping in our homes and in this world, confirm in us afresh the deep truth that we are the church, that we are your body that each of us are living stones, uniquely shaped, uniquely gifted, that in our coming together, we are the temple of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we come together to worship you. Amen. 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 We're going to move our order just a little. I'm going to invite John, who's intending in the church building, John Duxbury, to come and bring to us our first Bible reading. It's from Matthew's Gospel that John will explain to us. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 12. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. When Jesus came to the region of Cassare Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon of Jonah, but this was not revealed to you by the flesh and blood, 
but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Then he orders his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Thank you, God. If you've already watched Jane's Children's and Families talk, you'll know that there's a crucial question in the midst of that reading. And a life-changing and eternity-changing declaration by Peter. Who do you say I am? Jesus asks. And Simon Peter answers, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's who we gather this morning to worship. As wonderful as it is to gather together and to reconnect in that human relationship, to smile at one another, to greet to one another, to share life, there is such a deeper, greater significance to the church, as wonderful as that is. We gather this morning to worship the living God. So for a moment, I just encourage you to be still and just acknowledge afresh that this is a time of encounter. A time where we fix our eyes upon Jesus and offer our lives, our whole lives, as worship. Lord Jesus, we welcome your presence. We bask afresh in the privilege of knowing you as our Saviour and as our God. Receive our worship and praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Can I invite you to stand up in the church building? Indeed, if you wish to stand at home, it might mean the camera shot is of your tummy, but um, if you want to stand, that would be equally welcome. We're going to sing our first hymn. For those of you at home via Zoom, you can sing to your heart's content, but be reassured that you're muted, so you're not going to be serenading the church in that sense. And for those of us in the church building, I'm sorry that the constraints of COVID are that we can't sing. But I think you are allowed to surreptitiously gently hum under your mask. Would you like to stand? The words will be on the screen. Pete's going to share that screen now. The splendor of the King of the majesty
You are great, Lord, and for those in the church building, we feel the frustration and the irritation that we can't express that in song, but we delight in the knowledge that our brothers and sisters can sing on our behalf, and that in that frustration that we can dedicate ourselves to worshipping you in all that we do and think and live. Amen. Oh. Sorry, Frank, that was Would you like to be seated? So I'm going to hand over at this point to Jane. She's going to share with us what the children and young people have been up to or what they're challenged to get involved with. Good morning, everybody. So children and young people this morning, um, on the order of service, uh, I'd encourage you to collect some stones and to do some stone decorating this morning. We are looking at um, the Bible reading that John just brought to us. So we're thinking about who Jesus is, um, but also within that, who Jesus says we are. So Jesus said to Peter, I call, he said, I call you Peter, which means the rock. And Jesus knew what Peter was going to do and how he was going to start churches. And he called him rock. So 
that's why we're doing the stones this morning. So there's a couple of things to do with the stones. You can either just decorate it to your heart's content and just enjoy doing that, or you could put your name onto the stone and use it as a paperweight or a decoration and just think about who God says you are, who Jesus says you are, that you're loved, that you're precious, that you're special. The other thing you could do with it is put something on, on the stone about Jesus. So you could put Jesus loves you or something like that. And then, as you've probably seen um, on your walks and things, people do pop stones in random places, don't they? Maybe down the old railway line or things like that. And if you want to put something like Jesus loves you on that stone and go and pop it somewhere on a walk, that would be an amazing message for somebody to see. So there's a few ideas there that you can do with your stones, but we'd love to see what you've done at the end of the service. Thank you, Jane, that's brilliant. I'm just gonna dip into prayer once more with today's colleagues, the special prayer for this Sunday. I've got so many things I need to mute and unmute if the computer is the battery back. Today is Cox. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage to never lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Try that. Okay, we're not going to have our breakout groups at this point. We're going to come to that a, a little bit later for reasons that hopefully will become clear. Carl, can we just do a little scan through yeah. on the church screen? So, wait a second, let's just, just so we can see who we've got here. So we've got the Turner family. Oh, let's go back. So for those of you in church, we've got the Turner family, we've got Darren and Karen and Anne, we've got John and Marion, we've got Joe, we've got the Blythe family, we've got Keith and Mayor, we've got Ruth Mitchell, we've got Carol Taylor, we've got Barbara, thank you, we've got the Oakses, we've got the Roebucks, we've got Yesin and Dory, fresh from their anniversary celebrations, we've got Deb, we've got Clive and Ginny, we've got Ross, we've got Eileen, Oliver, Will Shaws, Hannah and Shirley, thank you. Yeah. We've got Reg, we've got Mike, we've got a group of reprobates in the corner there. It's my family. Then if we go across, see how we see we've yeah. got people moving about, we've got all Shaws for the people we miss. We've got Alison and John, we've got Katie Brooks, we've got Jess, who's gonna pop up later in we've got Gary, we've got Bab, we've got the Nisa, we've got Rebecca is going to be leading our prayers. So that's just to remind us that we're all oh, onto yeah, a fresh well. microphone back now. <laughs> Keeping me on my toes, thank you. And I'll just do a quick skirt round so you can see who's in the church building. So, obviously you're not going to be able to see in real detail. But there you go, here's who's in the church building. Yeah, let's give away, there we go. There we go, and all the way around. So do we have any birthdays in the Zoom, people who are joining us by Zoom? Anyone who's gonna, John Rogers is being highlighted by his Marion. Is there anyone else? <laughs> me? Yeah. Me? Call it Annie. Annie. Annie's birthday. Um, I'm just scrolling through. Uh, Gorgas is a good man. I think that's... You like that's that's so, John, would you like to unmute <laughs> and declare your age if you wish to publicly? Well, the Beatles did a very good song about my age. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 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 Ah, uh, just the young lads. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, if he stands on his head, he's 46. <laughs> <laughs> we can't hear John. We might just have to sing yeah, happy birthday to him. <laughs> we'll go with, let's go with 80. 
And then, by the power of sign language, is it Annie or Paul? Me. Annie. It's Annie. Are you 82, my... Annie? Sorry? <laughs> no! <laughs> We're having to I'm not even read, 60. But that was no. Um, I'm not even right, 60. Let's, let's sing Happy Birthday. There's no one in the church congregation, is there? Mary Webb tomorrow. Okay, we're gonna sing to you from the church building. So we've got John, Annie, and Mary Webb. And just for the public records, this has been recording. None of them are 80. Just to clarify that. Um, I'm gonna have to start off. I normally ask John Gibson to do it. Okay, so it's John, Annie, and Mary. Let's greet them and celebrate their birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, John Happy birthday to you. Right, I'm now, for Zoom people, sorry, I'm now on my third change in microphone, so. Um, right, I think we're going to move to a, a time of confession. So if you'd like to take your orders of service, I'm just going to still myself for a moment personally to remind myself that this isn't about the technology, the faith and the service. This is about encountering the living God. And as we fix our eyes upon Jesus, it's only right and it's only natural that in that there may be things that rise up within us where we think, I didn't do that as Jesus would have wished. The way that I thought about that person would not have pleased him. My attitude in that moment was not one of worship and thankfulness. And so let's allow this prayer not to draw us into guilt, but to encourage us into the wonderful gift that is forgiveness. When I've been grumpy and irritable. When I've been stressed and irritated by technology. When I've been hopeless at listening and impatient with others. When I've criticised our leaders more than I've prayed for. When I thought of only myself and my family. When I've moaned about the weather. When I've not been grateful, thankful or encouraging. And when I've neglected prayer and spending time with you. Lord Jesus, you know I'm not perfect. Thank you that you are. Thank you that when I say sorry, you give me a fresh start. That's the truth. That when we say sorry, Jesus gives us a fresh start. But we need help. Otherwise, we'll just do those things over and over again. And so we pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, please help me to live for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our second reading is brought to us by Jez, our parish assistant. And we recorded this in church earlier in the week. 
and Pete's going to share screen and we'll listen to him read it to us. Our second reading is taken from Romans 12, 1 to 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy, in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is in giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jess. Jess is hiding somewhere in the Zoom congregation. Uh, thank you for bringing our reading to us. And our preacher, this Sunday is Les, and Les is going to When I first uh, recorded the sermon this morning, to tell you the truth, I thought we were going to hear it in church this morning. But you've got to just make do with this. In the reading that we've just heard, uh, Paul's outlining the lifestyle that we should follow uh, as Christians, and many of his uh, first hearers would have a Jewish background where making animal sacrifices was part of their worship. And so Paul's explaining now that as Christians, the sacrifice that God wants for each one of us is ourselves, which is to sacrifice ourselves, make ourselves sacrifices. So the two key words are transformation and renewal. And the sermon aims to unpack what it means to each of us as individuals and what it means for us as a body of Christ here in Biddle. So I hope you'll dash home and hopefully first have sweaty tears a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to go back to confession because I recorded the sermon with Les and some of our preachers have sweaty buckets and it's taken them about 12 recordings to record it. Les did it in one. We, we met in church at half past 10, I think it was. By 11, I was off down the road, jogged up. But it's, it's a wonderful sermon. I really commend it to you. As Les indicated, um, next Sunday and moving forward, we're going to be able to include the sermon as part of my service. Um, so that's a further exciting d development. But I really commend to you to, to look at the email link that we sent out this morning um, and, and less really challenges us and really encourages us. So I want to commend that to you. If you haven't already watched it, a number of people in the church building have said that they've watched it. It's been really helpful. I really encourage you at some point today to give over, I think it's 30 minutes, that's all it is, to allow Les to encourage you to fix your eyes upon Jesus, and to allow God's word to shape us and to mould us. A couple of things come out of that reading. Do not conform to the past in this world, but be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind. That sense of transformation, God being at work in us, us being a work in progress. And then as Les also draws out, then that sense of what has God given you to bless your brothers and sisters with? What are your gifts? What are your, what do you have to offer? And what we're going to do now is for those of you who are attending via Zoom, we're going to break down into breakout groups just for four minutes. And what I want to encourage you to do is to pray with one another about those two specific areas. So is there something where you would like your brothers and sisters to pray for sort of transformation, for change? There's something you're struggling with, something that you're battling with. And then also to pray for one another that God would show you how he has uniquely gifted you to be a blessing to St. Lawrence's. And I'd like us to do the same in church. So those same two questions. If you can just turn to a couple of people on me. You obviously do this socially distanced. You may have to drop your mask down to make yourself heard. But that same thing. Is there anything that you would like to ask your brother and sister to be praying for for you? Is there a challenge, something where you need God's transformation? And then also to pray for each other that God's Holy Spirit would encourage each one of us with those gifts, those things that he has given us to be a blessing. So Zoom, if you'd like to accept the invitation that you'll get from Pete to join to breakout groups, there should just be two or three of you, so you've got time to pray and share, and we'll do that in the church building, and then we'll all come together. I hope that was helpful and meaningful and I'd encourage us to carry those things in praying for, for one another. Are we, are we all back in Zoom? Has anyone disappeared? It looks like you're back. We're going to continue in that atmosphere of prayer and Rebecca is going to, through Zoom, is going to lead us in our intercession. So Rebecca, if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. Well, as I give thanks for the safe delivery of my granddaughter this morning, and I've become a grandma for the first time, I would like you to join me in prayers. Um, when we say, Lord, in your mercy, please would you reply, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. We especially pray for those caught in a localised lockdown, that you would grant them patience, understanding, and that they would know your love from those who can be in contact. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for Lebanon and the people of Beirut as they deal with the, the destruction and death from the explosion. We pray for peace and stability as the government tries to navigate the crisis. Play, pray especially that corruption would not impact the ability of officials to deliver aid, particularly to the most vulnerable. We pray for Christian community in Beirut. Reports suggest that Christian section of the city was heavily affected by the blast. Lord, we ask that you hand, your hand would be on the believers there and surround them with your love. We pray for the churches in Beirut as they come alongside people who are injured and mourning. We pray the church in Lebanon, all denominations, would be a source of comfort and peace to the people of Beirut. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, may your presence be felt by young people who have received their A-level 
and GCSE results or are having to wait for BTEC results. We pray that justice will be reached for those who found their university places had been taken by others. May the students know their worth and value is not just based on academic achievement, but more truly on your great love for them. Help them to trust in your goodness, fix their eyes firmly on you, and to guide their steps along the path before them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Passionate Lord, we pray for those who have been devastated by wildfires in the Amazon rainforest and California. We hold in our hearts the families forever changed by grief and loss. Bring them consolation and comfort. Surround them with our prayer for strength. Bless those who have survived and heal their memories of the trauma and devastation. May they have the courage to face the long road of rebuilding ahead. We ask you ble your blessing on all those who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, their security. Bless the work of relief agencies and those proving, pr providing emergency assistance. May their work be guided by the grace and strength that comes from you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our um, prayer. And my, uh, Steve continues in our prayers with all the church. We're going to continue in prayer. And maybe there are particular individuals that we can bring to mind. It's a strange season that we live in now, isn't it? Where it feels like things are moving on. Then we watch the news and there are local outbreaks. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick. And your wisdom to those searching for a cure. We pray for all health workers, care workers, and research scientists, strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health. And then we turn our attention to praying for those who are ill and sick, not necessarily for COVID-19, but those known to us. At this point, I'm just going to invite John Duxbury. He'd just like to share with us one individual who we can be praying for as a church family. Would you like to come up, John? Could I ask you to spend just a few moments in thought about our very good friend, Jesse Wood. Jesse, as you know, is a stalwart of the church. She's been a member for some 90 years. And in fact, in November of this year, she'll be 98 years of age. You probably know that her health has been not bad, but failing, particularly her eyesight and now her hearing. Three weeks ago, she had a fall and was being hospitalized and is undergoing tests and care and attention. She's a wonderful person, one of the, probably the first person I actually got to know at this church some six years ago. She's taught me an awful lot about life, about the community, and her take on life is quite remarkable. Her mind works like a little Swiss watch. 
Her memory is unbelievable. But she's frail. And I'd like you to think about her and find a very, very special moment in your private thoughts for her well-being. And I pray to God that he sends down his love and his care. Thank you. Thank you, John. And I'm sure there are others of our church family and loved ones and neighbours and friends who we want to say, yes, please, everything that John said for Jesse, we would desire for them. So as we pray, again, I encourage you to offer those who come to mind and to commit not to just pray in this moment, but as John encouraged us to do so, to pray for them regularly, as we are privileged to do. Merciful God, we entrust your tender care. Those who are ill or in pain, knowing whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal and restore them to health and strength. If those you wish to name publicly, please do stay what the John said. Just bear them in the privacy of your own heart to Jesus. Rep and Ruth. Hannah. Ray. Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yeah. and we conclude this time of prayer together in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Again, for those of you will be muted, but we'll all be sharing in these words together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from you. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing our second song now. It's a, it's a contemporary hymn, song that will be new to us. Um, but what I'd like you to do is, for those of you who are able to sing, um, catch the tune and join in. And for those of us who are only allowed to hum, um, what I'd like us to do is to allow the words to come to Jesus. I'm no longer a slave to fear. If we sing that, Maybe for you, fear isn't something that you've been saying. I know we've interrupted them. You can. Well, I'm thinking about it, but I can't, I can't, I can't do not say it. Do you want to come up so everyone can share with everyone? I do. It's all right, we're just being it's, like hope, a hijacking. Hopefully this will encourage everybody. Can I speak? One of my friends that I go out with a long time, for a long, long time, we've all worked together. We've been going out for about 40, 50, 60 years. Her husband has been diagnosed with cancer and it was bowel cancer and he couldn't have the operation for bowel cancer because it had spread to his liver. So the doctor said over many, many months of chemo and all the rest of the rubbish that you have to go through, that he would have to have a liver operation to remove the cancer on his liver before they could do his bowel, he could address the cancer for the bowel. 
Anyway, I've been praying for him daily, absolutely daily. A few months ago, he went down to Birmingham and had the spots on his liver removed. She doesn't really believe, but doesn't disbelieve either. So now, on Friday, he had the cancer removed out of his bowel. And that was her ringing during the service. <laughs> We've just prayed for him, have we not? Yeah. We have just prayed for him. And everything's gone absolutely fantastic. They've attached the, the bowel back together again, but it's got to heal for two months. They've got all the cancer. It's perky, it's well, and he's doing well. If that isn't an answer to prayer, if it isn't anything to do with prayer, I don't know. Because when I was walking to Janet the other night, his, his operation had been cancelled, and I'd sent a quick one up. And Chris <laughs> rang me and said, I'm not supposed to be ringing you, Joe. I said, how's Brian got on? She says he hasn't had his done. Well, he's had it done. It seems to be successful. So if everybody is encouraged by that, I'm going to continue to pray that it will continue to progress. So, awesome. <laughs> God is good. I have to share that because it's in yeah, yeah, the moment. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 sorry at all. You can hijack the service anytime you wish. Wonderful news. For Brian, let's continue to pray for him. So in Brian's situation, as we worship, I'm no longer a slave to fear, which fit really appropriately. I'm no longer a slave to cancer. Cancer does not have to define my life. Maybe for you it might be, I'm no longer a slave to insecurity. I'm no longer a slave to bitterness. I'm no longer a slave to my circumstances. I'm, I'm struck by seeing Reg on my screen. Reg is a wonderful carer. And I'm sure there are moments in his week where he feels a slave trapped in his circumstances. But I know that Reg will testify that he's not. He's a child of God. For a moment, just want you to think almost, what, how would this be my son? I'm no longer a slave to my past. I'm no longer a slave to what so-and-so said about me when I was 12 years old and it stuck with me all my life. Or many, many other things. I'm no longer a slave. Pete's going to share screen now. Please do um, sing along if you are at home. Sorry, we can't hear. I know. 
Would you like to be seated? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You are a child of God. Do not conform to this pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind. You are a child of God. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, please, and pleasing and perfect will. You are a child of God. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. But rather think of yourself with sober judgment and in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. You are a child of God. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. You are the family of God. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. My goodness, we love it when other members of the church family encourage us. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. You are a child of God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the testimony this morning and how you are at work in Brian's life and pray that we bring that to its full completion. We thank you for the gift that Jonah's offered us this morning, being a child of God and saying, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to share because God needs to be glorified. He needs to be worshipped because of what he's in the situation. We thank you for how the Spirit has led us and broken it. Even with technology and batteries not working in my cream cats, it doesn't matter because we're here to worship. I'm going to ask Chef to come and share with us. That's got him jumping out of his seat. To come and share how we're going to be gathering next week in worship. Morning, everybody. I just want to say something about that song before I say what I want to say, and that is, you know, you'll know that I'm very much involved with Sanctus that supports uh, refugees and asylum seekers in, in Stoke. And uh, one of the, the, the church service that's sort of connected with that, that song is sung very, very frequently there, or it used to be sung very, very frequently there. And if you think about asylum seekers who travel many miles to leave difficult situations, places where they've been persecuted, places where they've been tortured. Some of the stories are heartrending, and they've come to be part of the community in Stoke-on-Trent and they've got involved with the church. As a result of being part of the church there, part of Sanctus, some of them have gone on to find Jesus. They found freedom and a release from fear by coming to the UK, but they found a greater release from fear by finding Jesus and they truly can sing even though English is not their first language and you can see that they really mean it I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God and it really is meaningful to them when I hear that song sing, sung although I'm not a very emotional sort of person it almost almost brings me to tears because I know what happens there 
Very excitingly, next week, um, it's our Mission Sunday, and we're going to be focusing on Sanctus. And Sally Smith is going to be speaking to us. She's not actually coming to the church buildings, sadly. She probably would have done, but it was arranged before we could have done that. So she'll be recorded. But that her sermon will be in the service next week, and then it'll be on YouTube after that. So that's part of our service next week, and we'll be thinking about how we can pray for and support uh, Sanctus. And also next week in the service, something else exciting is happening because there's going to be a Thanksgiving service for the birth of a baby. I don't know what the name of the baby is or who the parents are. I'm looking at <laughs> Lindsay who's going to be doing it, who's shaking her head as well. <laughs> but that's going to happen next week. It won't be part of what we do all together just now. It will happen after the service here. But if you're viewing on Zoom, then you'll be able to see it because we'll leave the feed on so you can see it, you can see what's happening there. Can I encourage you to come to church? It's been fantastic here in this morning. So get in touch with Jez and uh, see if you can come next week. It'd be good if there were no spare seats here, I think. <laughs> And I won't tell anybody, and Peter, you can cut this out of the recording, that Steve encouraged us to sing happy birthday earlier in the service. <laughs> I didn't even notice I did that. <laughs> Luckily, no one drew attention to it. <laughs> I can rely on Chef to cover for all. <laughs> We've just... Pete, would you just mind showing the little photo that we've got on PowerPoint? Do you want to just pop that up for a second and share the screen if that's possible? On your screen, hopefully, three fine examples of men at their physical peak. Uh, just want to say a big thank you to John and to Ken and to Mick, who's been roped in somehow. I think he just lives too close to John X. But for those of you who've arrived at the church, you'll have noticed there's a transformation in terms of grounds. And um, they've done an incredible job over the last few weeks of just hacking things back. So thank you, John, Oates, Ken Wilshaw, and the press gangs, Ken. Um, and also, I haven't got a photo of this, but John Gibson has put some wonderful gates in between the bowling club and the church. And again, that's been a big job. It's not completely altruistic. It's so that you can fit more classical cars in where we have the classic car show, but it's still a blessing. It'd be a blessing for lives next year and that kind of thing. So thank you. Brilliant. Um, just to encourage you to be praying for Dan and Jane. This week is move week and uh, so be praying for them and all of that involves and um, praying God's blessing. Moving house is stressful um, but um, obviously they'll still be with us via Zoom but physically um, they will be moving house. Is there anything from the Zoom service, anything that anyone wants to share? If you'd like to unmute and give us a wave um, I'll scroll through and see if I can see anyone. Steve? Yeah. Steve? Can you hear uh, me? Yeah, Doreen and Esther. Just, just a quickie. Just, just a quickie. Just a, just Sorry, a quickie. Uh, thank you very much to the church for the flowers and the chocolates that were received on our diamond wedding on Thursday. We had a lovely day. Thank you. Steve, can you hear me? Yeah, thank you Phil and Julianis for making that happen and I know that Dorian Estes watched us on Zoom in cricket where we were celebrating their anniversary with them last weekend. Is there anyone else waiting? Yeah, Steve, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Jeff, you like to unmute Jeff? It's for you Steve, have you read the bands? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to, but thank you for reminding me. And Carl was trying to shout at me as well. Are we, is there anything that we need to, we want to share from here? 
in that case, seamlessly and smoothly without any problems. Rebecca is waving. Right. Rebecca, would you, you like to I, I became a grandma this morning. I am a nana. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can't see you. <laughs> Baby was born at five to nine this morning. Mum and baby are doing well, so I am now a, a granny rev. If you'd like to meet me, we did notice you just subtly snuck that into the prayers, and there was a few kind of during the prayers, but obviously during the prayers you can't comment, so you've got it. But congratulations. Um, yeah, wonderful. You don't look old enough, Jess says, and we all agree with it. Right, Bands of Marriage. I published the Bands of Marriage of Edward John Vickers and Charlotte Marie Cooper, both of this parish. This is for the third and final time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. I guess on Zoom you give a wave. Um, so don't twitch at the wrong time. That's, there's no waving here. Let's pray for them. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Edward, uh, for Charlotte. What a challenging time to be planning a wedding. We pray that you would bless them and sustain them in their preparations. And as they draw to that time of celebration and commitment, we pray that you would draw them to yourself. We pray that they would build their lives upon you, the rock. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the conclusion of this act of worship together. For those of you who worship via Zoom, please feel free to stick around and to, to chat and to fellowship if you wish. We break out groups. We're going to close. Children. Children. Children, thank you. Jill and Lindsay just pointed. James, shall I hand over to you? I did three stones. I did one with my name on it and a rainbow. I did the world and I did a smiley face. Well done, Ed. Josh, are you going to show yours? Do you want me to show one of yours? Okay, any other children, any young people? I can't see anybody waving at me. No. No, I don't think there is this morning, no. So back to you, Steve. Right, so let's finish with our closing acclamations. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way, that trusting in your presence in this world, we may beyond this life still be with you where you are alive and reign forever and ever. And we say together, Holy Trinity, we pray that we, 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 we might glorify you in all we think and do and say this in our Amen. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you 
and remain with you always. Amen. 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 So let us go in peace to love and serve our In the name of Christ. Amen. Bless you for those who have been worshipping via Zoom. Continue in fellowship if you wish. Sorry to those of us in church. Please do continue in fellowship, but please can you do it outside in the open space? That's the encouragement we have. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Steve. God bless everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.